Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan, and in today's video, I'm going to make a double slider surprise gift card holder. I'm going to be having a scene in the front, a message that pulls out, and then the gift card is going to be in the back. Some of the supplies I'm using today is the double slider surprise. I haven't made one in a while, and I thought this would be really fun to do a gift card with. I have the winter birds, Joy to the Woods, I'll be using the birch trees, and then my sentiment is going to come from Merry Messages. I have the mini snowflakes die set and the stitched hillside border. On Express It cardstock, I'm laying out the images that I think I might use. I was kind of indecisive right now if I wanted to have the branches coming in from the side or if I wanted to have those birch trees in the background. So I just figured they were both easy enough to color. I would just stamp them all at once and then later on I'll pick out what I want to use. I am stamping them in the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink so I can color these with my alcohol markers. The markers that I plan to use today are the Olo markers. These are an alcohol-based marker. I'm going to start by coloring the birch trees. Now, I think these are super easy to do because for the most part, I'm going to leave them white. I'm just adding a light gray to one side of them to show that there is a shadow area on that side. And then I go over all of those stamped lines with that same marker. One of the reasons that I love having these kind of birch trees in the background is it gives a place for the eye to rest because it is pretty light. I mean, I left most of them white, so it's just a nice place to break up any kind of busy background that I might have. For the snow, I used a very light blue, and then I'm going to color my birds with a red color combination. I'm going to be adding shadows to this bird that's kind of flying in. I feel like this bird is facing to the right-hand side, which means I'm going to add my darkest color to the left-hand side of the bird. I am using a three color blend, so I just start with my darkest color and blend out to the lightest. Now for this second bird, I you know that's obviously looking to the left hand side, so I am going to add my shadow area to the right hand side and then continue out with the remaining colors. This one that's facing to the front can get a little tricky. Uh, sometimes I get pretty indecisive if I want the highlight area to be down the center or off on the side. I think I might have done it both ways between the head and the wings. This one also I feel can be a little tricky because there's no definite line on where the body and uh, kind of the belly begins and ends. So I'm just going to kind of use some artistic freedom on this one and end it where I want so that I still have a little bit of a white area showing. For the scarves, I'm going to use the same color combination throughout all of the birds, which is just kind of this teal color. Once again, I'm just going to kind of follow the shadow um, shadow scheme, I guess, that I used for the birds. So if it's facing to the left and I added my shadows to the right, then I'm going to use that same kind of way for the scarves. For the beaks, I did an orange, although I kind of wish I would have done a yellow. I think that would have stood out a little bit better. And then once again, just using some warm grays to do the face and the belly of the birds. Then once it comes down to those branches, I figured I would just follow that same color scheme as my birch trees. So I just used that warm gray for these two branches and started out with a dark color towards the bottom and then just kind of blend it up a little bit so it's going to fade off into white. I picked out a few ornaments that I thought I might add to my picture. I wasn't quite sure at this point, so I grabbed a color combination. Uh, this is really great as kind of a gold representation. It was a little darker than I anticipated, but I just kind of went with it, and I figured if nothing else, if I wasn't happy with how this was looking, I would just add some sparkle on top of it, which is actually what I ended up doing. I then took the coordinating dies, lined them up over the image, held them down with tape, and die cut all of my pieces. Then I can work on the assembly, so I went ahead and die cut pieces from the snow mini snowflakes and uh, the double slider surprise. The mini snowflakes, I just did a handful of them out of white cardstock, so I'm going to add them to my little pile over there. And then for the double slider surprise, I did out of craft cardstock kind of been on a craft cardstock kick lately. This piece is going to be our our main piece that we're going to add our slider to. Then we have the two panels that we're going to decorate. 
and we have the two panels here that we are going to be creating our pocket with. So these two panels that we are going to be creating the pocket with, they do have a line on them that you need to just kind of fold over and then I reinforce that with my bone folder. Now before I assemble anything, I want to check to make sure that my scene is going to work and also was still debating at this point if I wanted to use the birch trees or the branches. I'm trying to be a little bit proactive about this because I hadn't really designed this ahead of time. So I was trying to make sure I had everything kind of set out before I attached anything. I did play with the branches and the ornaments and I also have these little pieces or uh, kind of settlings of snow on the branches for lack of a better word, I decided I wanted to go with the birch trees. Now I did die cut one of these panels from a white cardstock and I'm going to die cut that with the stitched hillside border. So I'm going to add this down where my sentiment is going to go. I'm adding a little bit of salvaged patina distress oxide to the top of that just to give that a hint of color for snow. I'll then bring it over and place this in my mini misty. I picked out a sentiment from the Merry Messages stamp set and I'm going to stamp that in the black licorice ink. Then I'll take this piece and I'm going to add a tape runner to the back of it right away and attach it to one of my craft panels. My intention, I'll tell you now, was to have the gift card holder pop out from the top and the sentiment pop out from the bottom. If you've seen the pictures in the beginning, you know that's not how it's going to look and I'll explain it as I go. But this is meant to be where my sentiment's going to go and maybe right from mom and dad because I planned on giving this to my daughter. Now this is the panel I plan on using for the front of my double slider surprise. I am adding in a few of the snowflakes that I die cut from white cardstock just attaching them in kind of a triangular pattern using my tweezers and the liquid glue. I'm also going to take a couple of those snowflakes and add them to this bottom panel that has my sentiment. I just thought it was a really nice scene filler. I'll then take these over to my splatter box and I'm going to be adding some white splatters to make it look like I have more snow in the background. So I just have some white paint that I mixed with a little bit of water. I'm taking a small paintbrush which is going to give me smaller flicks of the white paint. I'm adding it to both the uh, panel that has the sentiment and also the panel that's going to pull out from the top. I forgot that I wanted to have my birch trees on here so I can add my splatters to that. So I just kind of quickly put my box off on the side, added the birch trees with my liquid glue, and then I could bring this back over to my splatter box and add the snow. Because if it's snowing, I wanted it to be all over my background. I probably should have added the birds to it too to make it, you know, really look like it's snowing in the scene, but I didn't I didn't want to add splatters to my pretty colored birds. So I just left them off for now. I took that panel, flipped it over, and trimmed off the little bit of excess of the trees that were hanging over the edge. Next, I'm going to bring in the piece that's actually going to have our slider on it. So for this one, I'm taking the 1 8 of an inch double-sided tape. I'm going to add a strip of that to the top and the bottom of this piece, and then I'm going to flip this over and add that to the other side as well. So the top and the bottom, I will add that 1 8 of an inch double-sided tape. For the track itself, you want something pretty slippery. A lot of times you can use maybe some um, bags if you have any clear plastic bags. I decided I was going to try this where it is leftover packaging from some stamp sets I had. So I'm going through, I'm trimming off the top and the bottom and also the sides so that this is, it's got no connected edges to it. Now I'm going to slide this over and I'm going to trim this down to two and one quarter inch. Now this will actually give me two pieces so I can save one of these and put it off on the side. It is going to be a little tricky to see because it is clear. So it, I had to be a little bit careful with it, but it makes a great slider piece. To create the track, I'm taking that 1 8 of an inch double sided tape once again and I'm going to add it to the top of one end of that packaging. Then I'm going to bring in my track. I'm going to place this down over the top. So right now when I folded that end over, that is my double sided tape facing up. I can then just kind of carefully lean or place the other side or fold the other side over, make sure that it's long enough and it matches up. Then I can remove the backing of the double sided tape. 
I'm going to try and center this as best as I can in between my top and bottom and then just carefully fold this over. You don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose. Now I am going to have a little bit of excess hanging off so I am going to trim that off with my scissors just so I don't have a lot of excess packaging in between my slider pieces. Next, I'm going to slide that seam all the way over to the left-hand side, maybe coming in just a smidge. Then I'm gonna take that double-sided tape once again, and I'm gonna place another piece right over the top. Once I have that secured down, I'm gonna take this piece and I'm going to flip it over, and I'm gonna place a double-sided tape on the opposite end on the flip side. So I know this looks really awkward right now how I'm doing the tape, but this is just so I don't get things turned around. So sometimes I will make myself look a little awkward putting tape on just to make sure that I have it positioned correctly. So I have tape on the right-hand side on the back and on the left-hand side in the front. Now I was being super careful how I was placing this because I really wanted to make sure my sentiment was going to pop out to the bottom. So here I removed the backing of that double-sided tape on the front so this here has that tape on the left-hand side. I am matching up my right edge of my panel with the right edge of the track. Pushed that down and then flipped this over. Removed the backing of that double-sided tape. I'm taking my other decorated panel and flipping that because I want these both facing that same direction. So now as I pull it, my sentiment is going to pop out down towards the bottom. It's going to seem like it's a little hard to do at first, but once this track gets rolling, then it really does run smoothly, especially once I put it into the pocket. It works like a charm. So I was very excited that so far this was working exactly like I had planned. Before I get too far in my card or attach my pocket together, I need to take this tab and I'm lining up the edge of the die with the edge of my pocket. I'm gonna die cut this out from both pieces on the top and the bottom. That's creating these notches so that we can pull the panels out from this pocket. I'm adding that 1 8 of an inch double-sided tape to each of those tabs that I had creased before. I'm going to remove one of the backing and then I'm going to butt this up right next to my other panel. So it's going to line up right over that tab and it's going to create one long piece. Now you can see as I fold it that it's going to create a little pocket. So I placed my track inside of the pocket just like I wanted to come out so it matches with the front of my card because I didn't want these to be backwards where one was kind of facing in the opposite direction. So I'm going to remove the backing of that double-sided tape and I flipped it because I want to make sure like I said the front and the front of my sentiments all kind of match up. I'm taking that bottom piece, I'm lining it up with the bottom of my pocket. That top is going to line up with the top of my pocket, so I secured that down. Now here down towards the bottom, I removed the backing of the tape so I could fold that flap up. So there's a lot of folding and a lot of just lining this up so it fits inside of your pocket. I can remove the backing of those last two pieces and fold my pocket closed. So now when I flip this over, I can pull this out so the sentiment is coming out towards the bottom. I have that open space in the top and I was very excited that my scene was matching the same direction as my sentiment, just like I had planned. Everything right now was working out perfectly until I came to the gift card. I'm gonna make it work because I put way too much work into this at this point, so it's still going to work for me, but I think in a different card project, if I were to do this again, I would have to do it a little bit differently. Now here, I am going to finish off decorating the front of my project, so I brought in my birds. I kind of just placed everything where I think I want it. I added a bird down towards the bottom, so that one's gonna be a little bit of a surprise when the person pulls that bottom tab out. I am going to add the ornaments to the top. So I put the strand that it's going to hang from, I'm just stamping that in black ink and I had just placed it on an acrylic block. It was a lot easier to do it that way. Now, most of these things are getting on added on with thin foam squares. I did also stamp some bows in cranberry ink and die cut them out so they have a nice red bow at the top there. 
I have a couple of the ornaments overlapping and just kind of hanging down. Maybe there's some branches up there that we don't know about and added my bows to the top of those. The birds also have some thin foam squares added to them. And then I am going to bring in a white jelly roll pen and add some cute highlights to each of the birds. I did not add highlights to the ornaments because I did plan on adding some sparkle to those. So after I finished adding in my highlights, I'll then bring in the Lawn Fawn Sparkle Glaze and I'm going to fill in the ornaments. I'm just adding a very thin layer and this is going to give it a nice clear kind of glaze over the top with some sparkle on it. So after this point is when I decided to bring in my gift card holder. I am going to be putting this. This is one of the gift cards I'm giving my daughter. She's getting a couple of these, these gift cards that I'm going to be hiding either on the tree or in her stocking. I'm using the mini glue dots because I could not find my regular size glue dots. So I'm placing them on the back. Now I do highly suggest going back and watching the introduction video for the double slider surprise. I need to go back and watch that myself because here... I placed my card on that top panel, which it does fit. But when I tried to shut it, uh, it was getting stuck. It wouldn't go in. So I kind of thought about it a little bit and I decided I was going to put my gift card holder on the back. Now, I am totally okay with adding my gift card holder to the back of that panel because honestly, I think it's actually really funny. So when my daughter goes to open this or pull it open, I don't know if she's going to feel that there's a gift card on the back. It's it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's a very smooth feeling. So I think it's actually going to be kind of funny. Uh, and we like to kind of play little jokes on that. So she might be expecting something up on top, but here it's actually going to be hidden behind. So while this was not completely how I wanted it to go, I still think it worked out. There was a lot of work involved, so I was not letting it go to waste. I could have added some more decorating to the top, but I think actually having that snowy scene is really pretty, and it's not overpowering the design on the front of the panel. Now, I can write the front mom and dad on the bottom, or I can add it to the back. So whether my gift card holder worked out or not, I hope you enjoyed today's card inspiration. And if you have not invested in the double slider surprise, I think it's going to make a great stocking stuffer. Thanks so much for joining me today. See you soon.